But one of the keys that I want you to talk about was the nifty 50. So all of you who are responsible for managing money for your pension funds, endowments, et cetera, today, this was a period of time where you could just buy stocks and hold them forever, the nifty 50, these 50 stocks. And they sold at an average PE multiple uh, in 1972 at the height of 66 times. That was the average PE multiple at the time. And if you gave your money to a trust bank, JP Morgan or whoever, this is what they bought for you. Well, this was a difficult, there were some great companies, Eli Lilly, Walmart, etc., Disney, but there were some more difficult companies, obviously, Polaroid and others in this group. And adjusted for inflation, you lost 46% of your money. And so this was kind of the end. If putting your money out safe results in you only losing 46% of your money, uh, the, the explosion in growth of the money management business, eventually hedge fund business, uh, began. How did 1974 factor into your thinking at that time? Well, so, you know, there's the, there was the nifty 50, and then there's the, and then the bubble 74. So. I mean, in the bust of 74. So um, let me comment on them separately. Um, the Nifty 50 is a was a phenomenon that has repeated over and over and over again because it's the nature of the markets. So it would be the dot-com bubble of 1999-2000. And it, it, and it can, to some extent, be the lesson that might be relevant today. And that is the, the notion that... Um, there's a group of great stocks, and everybody sort of agrees that these are wonderful companies. And like today, a number of companies, if you look at the composition of uh, the, le the leadership of the bull market and the companies that are leading that bull market, those are wonderful, innovative companies, and like in 2000. And so, but what the nature of the markets, of course, is that uh, prices reflect the demand. And so when you get into a situation where people say that's a great company and they do well, and then there's the self-reinforcing notion of they do well because people bought a lot of them or are buying a lot of them, that makes for expensive stocks because the nature of our business, the nature of the beast, is something that if there's a lot of demand, it makes it expensive. And when you get into the demand that people are no longer thinking about, um, is it too expensive even though they're great companies, you have that ph phenomenon and so that was the nifty 50 and there are lessons and you know the reason I wrote this thing prin principles is the same things happen over and over again the same things happen over and over again and you have to know those so that was what that phenomenon looks like and uh, you know to know that something that made you a lot of money might be more expensive and you know it's when the the naive money comes in and they buy it because it's good without thinking about how it's expensive. That was a nifty 50. 1974 was also a good example of a time when, um, you, you know, it, it was such a good example of that. Um, taking my caddying time, and I'm take 1966 was the real dollar peak of the stock market, and 1974 was the bottom. And then 19, and you were describing it. Site 1966, that time of catting, uh, everybody believed that the stock market was going to go up. Uh, it was, you know, just dollar cost averaging and so on. And then, um, of course, it went down. 1974, as you point out, was exactly the opposite. Everybody believed that it was going to go down. The last thing in the world that you can, uh, that you should go is buy a stock, and that was the exact bottom. So the lessons are that the future is probably going to be a very different version of the present. And don't think that the past is going to be representative of the future. And that's, you know, sort of a timeless lesson, I think. 